I never thought it would happen to me. I always heard stories of kids being left home alone and something horrible happening, but I never thought I'd be one of them. I was 15 years old, and my parents had gone out of town for the weekend. It was summer, so I didn't have school either. I had a sister, but she was away at a camp with her friends. My parents left me in charge of the house, and I was excited about finally having some freedom. The first night was uneventful. I spent most of it watching TV and eating junk food. But the next morning, I found all the patio furniture thrown into our pool. I was shocked. We lived in a quiet neighborhood, and I couldn't understand why someone would do that. I brushed it off as kids playing a prank. The next day, I got bored and started snooping around the house. I went into my sister's room, curious to see what she was hiding. In the bottom drawer of her dresser, I found a false bottom with a hidden compartment. Inside, there was a gun and a large sum of money. I was stunned. I had no idea my sister was involved in anything like this. Then, I found drugs hidden there as well. I couldn't believe it. I remembered the incident with the patio furniture and started to feel uneasy. If my sister had a gun, there must have been a reason. I felt alone and vulnerable. After much deliberation, I decided to tell my parents. I knew it was the right thing to do, even though I was scared of the consequences. When my parents came home, they were furious. They confronted my sister, and she confessed everything. They called the police, and my sister was taken away. She spent some time in a rehabilitation center and came back a changed person. We were able to repair our relationship, and she's no longer involved in drugs. It was a difficult decision, but I'm glad I did the right thing. However, things took a sinister turn after my sister returned from the rehabilitation center. She became distant and started acting strangely. Sometimes, I would catch her staring blankly into space, her eyes filled with an unsettling emptiness. I tried to talk to her, but she would brush me off, claiming she was fine. Then, strange occurrences began happening in our house. Objects would move on their own, and we would hear eerie whispers coming from empty rooms. At night, I would wake up to the sound of footsteps pacing outside my bedroom door, but when I opened it, there would be no one there. I started to suspect that something was terribly wrong. One night, while everyone else was asleep, I decided to investigate. I crept downstairs, my heart pounding in my chest. As I reached the bottom step, I heard a faint whisper coming from the living room. I cautiously approached, and what I saw froze me in terror. My sister was standing in the middle of the room. Her eyes glazed over, and a sinister smile plastered on her face. Surrounding her were flickering candles and strange symbols drawn on the floor in chalk. I watched in horror as she began chanting in a language I couldn't understand, her voice low and guttural. I wanted to run, to scream for help, but I was rooted to the spot, paralyzed by fear. Suddenly, my sister's head snapped towards me, her eyes burning with an otherworldly intensity. She spoke, but it wasn't her voice. It was a deep, gravelly growl that sent shivers down my spine. Leave this place, mortal, she said, her voice dripping with malice. This house belongs to us now. I turned and fled, racing up the stairs and locking myself in my room. I huddled in the corner, trembling with fear, as the sound of my sister's chanting echoed through the house. I didn't know what to do or who to turn to. It felt like I was trapped in a nightmare from which I couldn't wake up. From that day on, the atmosphere in our house grew increasingly oppressive. My sister's behavior became more erratic, and the strange occurrences escalated. I knew that whatever had taken hold of her was evil, and it was only a matter of time before it consumed us all. It was nearly a decade ago, during a chilly September weekend, my folks decided to attend some friends' party, leaving me, a 13-year-old kid back home in our city apartment. Now, being alone in our downtown core apartment wasn't something new, but it still felt eerie, especially with the night creeping in. I was minding my own business, doing homework and tinkering on the piano when, out of the blue, the fire alarm blared to life. It was a common occurrence in our building, usually just a false alarm, but this time, it felt different. The noise grew louder, more insistent, and I knew I couldn't just ignore it. So, I threw on some clothes and headed out. The hallway was eerily deserted, which was odd for this time of the evening. 
There wasn't a whiff of smoke, but the flashing lights and incessant alarm urged me to leave. As I made my way down the stairs, the emergency lights painted everything in an eerie glow. Outside, chaos reigned. People thronged the streets, fire trucks blared their sirens, and confusion hung heavy in the air. I felt exposed, vulnerable, amidst the crowd, especially when I noticed a strange man eyeing me. He was dodgy-looking, with a scraggly beard and shabby attire, and his gaze made my skin crawl. I tried to keep my distance, but he sidled closer, his breath reeking of cigarettes. He started talking, his voice sending shivers down my spine. I tried to back away, but he persisted, reaching out to touch me. That's when Mr. Thompson, a neighbor from upstairs, intervened. He stood between us, shielding me from the creep's advances. Mr. Thompson told him off, and the man slunk away into the crowd. I was shaken, but relieved to have someone looking out for me. As the commotion settled, it turned out to be another false alarm. My parents returned, and I was glad to see them. That night taught me the importance of community and having good neighbors. It also reminded me that there are dangerous individuals out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for an opportunity. But with the right people around, we can stay safe and look out for each other. I was about 13 years old when my folks started leaving me alone at home without a sitter. It was cool at first, feeling all independent and stuff, but then something really freaky went down one evening. My parents were out for dinner, and I was chilling in the living room watching TV when the phone rang. I picked it up, but there was dead silence on the other end. Just as I hung up, the doorbell chimed. I hesitated, not wanting to answer, but I crept over to check anyway. No one was there. Then, out of nowhere, I heard a loud crash from the back window. I froze. When I snapped out of it, I bolted out the front door and sprinted to my buddy's house down the street. Once I felt safe, I called my folks, and they called the cops. When they got home, the place was already swarming with police. Turns out, we'd been robbed blind. The cops figured the intruder must have known I was alone. For weeks afterward, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every ring of the phone or knock at the door made me jump out of my skin. I had nightmares about that break-in, waking up drenched in sweat. Eventually, we got a call from the cops saying they nabbed the perp. He'd been scoping out the neighborhood, waiting for his chance to strike. I was relieved he was caught, but I couldn't shake the fear. I wasn't excited about being home alone anymore. My parents hired a sitter for a while, but as I got older, I had to fend for myself. I learned to keep my guard up at all times. Years went by, but the memory of that night lingered like a dark shadow over me. Even when I was home alone during the day, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. Every creak of the house, every unexpected noise, sent shivers down my spine. I became hyper-aware of my surroundings, constantly checking the locks on the doors and windows. Even the slightest sound would jolt me out of my skin, and I'd find myself peering anxiously into the darkness, half expecting to see someone lurking outside. The nightmares continued, each one more vivid and terrifying than the last. i dream of shadowy figures creeping through the house, their eyes glinting with malice as they closed in on me. I'd wake up in a cold sweat, heart pounding, unable to shake the feeling of dread that clung to me like a suffocating blanket. I tried to bury my fear, to convince myself that it was all in my head. But deep down, I knew the truth. The break-in had shattered my sense of security, leaving me feeling vulnerable and exposed. As the years passed, I learned to cope with my fear, to live with the constant sense of unease that haunted me. But no matter how hard I tried to move on, the memory of that night would always linger, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the safety of my home. I got home one day after school, and the house was empty. It was a sunny spring afternoon, so I left the main door open with just the screen door closed and unlocked. My town was so small that I never worried about break-ins. I let my dog out into the backyard to do his business and then went back inside to chill in the living room, watching TV. During a commercial break, the screen went blank, and that's when I saw a huge figure looming right behind me. Instantly, my heart started racing, and I felt like I couldn't breathe. My mind was racing with thoughts. Why didn't my dog bark? 
Was it a burglar? Was I about to be attacked? I turned my head slightly and saw in my peripheral vision that it wasn't a person. It was a big black animal. Panic turned to relief, but I was still on edge. What if it was a bear? My mind was playing tricks on me, imagining the worst case scenario. But as I turned fully to face the intruder, I realized it was just my neighbor's dog. He must have escaped and pushed open the screen door. He was panting and wagging his tail, looking harmless and happy. I walked him back to my neighbor's house, and we had a good laugh about the scare. But even though it turned out fine, I'll never forget that moment of sheer terror. From then on, I made sure to always latch the screen door tightly. I wasn't taking any chances. That incident taught me a valuable lesson about fear and the power of the unknown. Even though it turned out to be harmless, the feeling of dread and panic I experienced stayed with me for a long time. After that day, I became more cautious, always double-checking the locks and being more aware of my surroundings. The thought of someone, or something, lurking in the shadows haunted me, even in broad daylight. I couldn't shake off the feeling that there was something sinister out there, just waiting for the right moment to strike. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the wind outside, sent shivers down my spine. It's funny how one moment of fear can change your perspective on things. I used to feel invincible, but now I realize just how vulnerable I was. From then on, I made sure to always trust my instincts and never let my guard down, even in the safety of my own home. It was way back when I was still a kid in elementary school, maybe around 12 or so. Summer break had just kicked off, and my parents decided to ditch town for the weekend, leaving me and my older brother home alone. We were pumped, feeling like kings of the castle with the whole place to ourselves. My brother, being the cool dude he thought he was, bailed on me to hang out with his pals at the park. I was bummed but figured, hey, he's gotta have his fun too. So there I was, lounging on the couch, watching TV, when things took a turn for the worse. As twilight crept in, I heard a noise from the living room, like someone was messing with the door. I thought it was my brother, back early, but when I peeked around the corner, it wasn't him. It was Jim, one of my brother's sketchy friends, I knew he was trouble, and so did all the other girls in the neighborhood. My heart raced as I dashed to the bathroom and locked myself in. I could hear him prowling around the house, then knocking on the bathroom door, trying to coax me out. I stayed silent, petrified, hoping he'd just leave me alone. But he didn't give up. He kept at it until I couldn't take it anymore, and I screamed my lungs out. Thankfully, someone nearby heard me and called the cops. Jim bolted as soon as he heard the sirens, and I finally dared to come out. The police searched the place, but Jim was long gone. I never found out who called the cops, but I owe them big time. When my folks got back, they were livid. They chewed out my brother big time for ditching me and vowed to beef up security at home. I was mad at my bro too, for putting me in danger like that. And as for Jim, he tried to play it off like he was just stopping by, but my parents banned him from our house. Looking back, it was a close call, and it shook me up pretty bad. But in the end, no harm done, and I eventually forgave my brother. Still, it was a wake-up call about who you can trust and how easily things can go sideways, even when you're just chilling at home. That night left me with a lingering sense of unease. It was hard to shake off the feeling of being violated, knowing that someone had invaded our space, even if they didn't physically harm me. From then on, I was hyper-aware of every creak and rustle in the house, jumping at shadows and second-guessing every noise. My trust in people, especially those I considered friends of my brother, took a serious hit. It made me realize that danger could be lurking in the most unexpected places, even among people you thought you knew. Jim's betrayal of trust was a harsh lesson that stuck with me long after the incident was over. Despite my parents' efforts to beef up security, I couldn't shake the feeling of vulnerability. I found myself constantly checking and double-checking locks, peering through curtains at every passing shadow, and feeling a knot of anxiety whenever I was home alone. But as time passed, the fear slowly subsided, replaced by a newfound sense of caution and vigilance. I became more proactive about my safety, always making sure to lock doors and windows, and never letting my guard down, even in familiar surroundings. Looking back, that terrifying night served as a wake-up call, 
teaching me the importance of being vigilant and trusting my instincts. It made me realize that safety isn't guaranteed, and sometimes, you have to rely on yourself to stay out of harm's way. My name is Jake, and this chilling encounter happened when I was in ninth grade. It was just like any other afternoon when I got home from school around 3.30. With both my parents still at work, I knew I had the house to myself for a while. Usually, I chill out, watch some TV, or maybe do a bit of homework. But on this particular day, things took a terrifying turn. The moment I stepped through the front door, a feeling of unease washed over me. It was like a sixth sense telling me something wasn't right. Then, I heard it, faint noises coming from upstairs. At first, I brushed it off as the usual creaks and groans of an old house. But as I listened closer, I realized it was footsteps. Someone was up there, moving around. Panic set in as my mind raced through all the worst-case scenarios. Burglars? Intruders? I crept to the bottom of the stairs, heart pounding in my chest, and peered up. In the dim light, I could make out the silhouette of a man at the top of the staircase. He was staring down at me, his features obscured by shadows. I froze, feeling trapped and helpless. Every instinct screamed at me to run, but my legs wouldn't budge. It was like they were glued to the floor. As the man started descending the stairs, I knew I had to get out of there, fast. Summoning every ounce of courage I had, I bolted for the back door, my heart racing as if it might burst from my chest. Bursting out into the open air, I sprinted across the yard to my neighbor's house. Mrs. Parker, a kind elderly lady who lived next door, opened the door with a look of concern. Gasping for breath, I spilled out the terrifying ordeal to her. Without hesitation, she ushered me inside, offering comfort and reassurance. As I tried to steady my nerves, the distant sound of a car engine caught my attention. The intruder must have fled, but would he come back? Mrs. Parker called the police, who arrived promptly to investigate. They combed through the house, but the intruder was long gone. Later, we discovered that some of my mom's jewelry and other valuables were missing, but thankfully, I had managed to scare the intruder away before he could do any more harm. In the weeks that followed, I couldn't shake the fear that lingered, always wondering if he would return. I slept with one eye open and jumped at every little noise. But gradually, the fear subsided, and life returned to normal. Yet, I'll never forget that day, and I'm eternally grateful that I had the presence of mind to get out when I did. It was a close call, but I was fortunate to escape unharmed. I remember this eerie incident like it was yesterday, back when I was a 13-year-old kid in the mid-1990s. It was one of those evenings when my parents were out, leaving me home alone with just the glow of the TV to keep me company. As darkness settled outside, there came a knock at the door. Peeking through the peephole, I saw a man, probably in his late 20s or early 30s, standing there. He seemed polite enough, but alarm bells started ringing in my head. My parents had always drilled into me the importance of caution when dealing with strangers, especially when home alone. The man spun a tale about his car breaking down and needing to use our phone to call for help. I hesitated, my gut telling me something wasn't right. I asked him about his car, but when I looked outside, there was no sign of any vehicle. It struck me odd that he'd passed by neighboring houses with visible cars in their driveways to come to ours. As I questioned him, his demeanor shifted, growing agitated and defensive. Alarm bells rang louder in my head. Sensing danger, I told him to check with our neighbors and decided it was best to send him on his way. But as I shut the door and locked it behind me, his demeanor turned hostile. He started hurling insults and curses at me, his voice echoing through the silence of the night. I stood my ground, refusing to be intimidated by this stranger. I made sure all the doors were locked and then called my parents to tell them what had happened. They urged me to stay inside until they got back and I obeyed nervously waiting for their return. Thankfully, nothing else happened that night, but the incident left me shaken. In the days that followed, my parents spoke to our neighbors, but none of them had encountered the man. However, we noticed a suspicious car circling the neighborhood, and my dad suspected it might be connected to the incident. A few weeks later, one of our elderly neighbors fell victim to a robbery. 
While we couldn't be certain, I couldn't shake the feeling that the incidents were connected somehow. It was a chilling reminder of the dangers lurking just beyond our doorstep. The unsettling encounter left me on edge for weeks. Every creak of the floorboards or rustle of leaves outside made me jump. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, even in the safety of my own home. My parents took extra precautions, installing security lights and reinforcing the locks on our doors and windows. Despite their efforts to reassure me, I couldn't shake the fear that the man might return, or worse, that someone else with ill intentions might come knocking. The incident changed the way I viewed our neighborhood. What was once a familiar and safe environment now seemed fraught with unseen dangers. I found myself constantly scanning the streets, looking for any sign of suspicious activity. But life had to go on, and eventually, the initial fear began to fade. Yet, the memory of that night lingered, a reminder of the fragility of safety and the importance of staying vigilant. As the years passed, the neighborhood returned to its usual rhythm, and the incident became just a distant memory. But I never forgot the lesson it taught me. To trust my instincts, stay cautious, and always be prepared for the unexpected. I'm Jake, and this happened when I was 14 years old back in 2003. It was a regular afternoon, and I was chilling in my room playing some video games. Suddenly, I heard the sound of a car pulling into our driveway, which I figured was my mom getting back from work. But then, I heard footsteps on the porch above me, and the screen door creaked open. I thought it was odd, so I decided to go check it out. As I crept upstairs, I heard voices coming from the backyard. I peeked through the curtains and saw two sketchy-looking dudes prowling around. They definitely weren't friends of my older brother or anyone I knew. One was bulky with a gray sweatshirt, and the other was average-sized in a black tee. Alarm bells started ringing in my head. I knew I had to do something before things went south, so I called my mom at work and told her what was up. She wasted no time and called the cops while instructing me to stay put. I went into panic mode but managed to hide in my closet, hoping they wouldn't find me. Outside, I could hear the guys trying to get in, messing with doors and windows. It felt like forever, but finally, I heard sirens blaring. The police had arrived. From my hiding spot, I watched as they took down the intruders and cuffed them. Relief flooded through me. The cops stayed with me until my mom got home, and I was just glad it was all over. It was hands down one of the scariest moments of my life. I mean, who wouldn't freak out with strangers trying to break into their home? But I count myself lucky that they didn't get in, and that the cops showed up in time. After that, I made sure to double-check all the locks whenever I was home alone. You never know when something like that might happen again. After that incident, I couldn't shake off the feeling of unease whenever I was home alone. Every creak of the floorboards or gust of wind made me jump. My parents tried to reassure me that everything was fine, but I couldn't shake off the fear. I started locking every door and window religiously, even during the day, and forget about going outside to play basketball or ride my bike. I was glued to the house, afraid that those guys might come back. Nighttime was the worst. Every little noise sent shivers down my spine. I'd lie awake in bed, listening intently for any signs of trouble. Sleep became a luxury I couldn't afford. But as days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, the fear started to fade. Slowly but surely, I began to feel safe again in my own home. The memories of that terrifying day still lingered, but they no longer controlled me. Life eventually returned to normal, and I learned to appreciate the little things, like playing video games without a care in the world or hanging out with friends in the backyard. Looking back now, I realize that experience taught me an important lesson about resilience and the importance of staying vigilant. I may have been scared, but I didn't let fear consume me. And in the end, I came out stronger because of it. My name's Jake, and I was about 16 when this happened. It was a quiet night on our farm, surrounded by endless fields. My parents were out of town, leaving me alone in the house. I didn't mind being by myself. In fact, I enjoyed the solitude. Around 11.30, I stepped out onto the porch for a smoke. As I sat on the swing, I noticed a figure standing on the road in front of our house. At first, I thought it might be a friend or neighbor, but something felt off. 
The guy was tall and broad-shouldered, wearing dark clothes. I couldn't see his face clearly, but his presence gave me the creeps. He just stood there, motionless, like he was waiting for something. I went back inside, hoping to ignore him, but when I glanced out the window, he was still there, pacing back and forth. His steps were quick and purposeful, and it sent a chill down my spine. I called my parents, and after convincing them I wasn't joking, they told me to call the police. It felt like forever for them to arrive, but when they did, the guy was gone. The police didn't see anyone, and I was left feeling uneasy. I couldn't shake the feeling that he might come back. I spent the night wide awake, fearing he might show up again, but thankfully, he didn't. To this day, I still can't explain who he was or why he was there. It was a terrifying experience, and it's something I'll never forget. Days passed after that eerie encounter, but the memory lingered in my mind like a haunting shadow. I found myself constantly glancing out the windows, half expecting to see that mysterious figure lurking in the darkness. My parents returned home, unaware of the unsettling events that had transpired in their absence. I debated whether to tell them, but I couldn't bring myself to burden them with my fears. Life on the farm resumed its usual rhythm, but I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the wind outside, sent shivers down my spine. Then, one night, as I lay in bed, I heard it, the unmistakable sound of footsteps outside my window. My heart raced as I dared to peek through the curtains, half expecting to come face to face with the sinister stranger. But there was nothing. No shadowy figure lurking in the darkness, no sign of anyone outside. I convinced myself it was just my imagination running wild, a trick of the mind fueled by fear. Yet, the feeling of unease persisted, gnawing at the edges of my sanity. I struggled to sleep, haunted by the uncertainty of what lurked beyond the walls of our farmhouse. Days turned into weeks, and still, there were no more sightings of the mysterious stranger. Life carried on, but the memory of that night lingered like a specter, casting a pall over our once peaceful home. In time, the fear began to fade, replaced by a cautious sense of vigilance. I learned to trust my instincts, to listen to the whispers of intuition that warned of unseen dangers. And though I may never know the true identity of the shadowy figure that haunted our farm that night, I found solace in the knowledge that I had faced my fears and emerged stronger for it. Back when I was 17, I had three dogs, Buddy, a Dutch Shepherd Pitbull mix, Lucy, a Yellow Lab Whippet mix, and Rocky, a Lab Dalmatian Greyhound mix. Buddy was six, Lucy was two, and Rocky was one at the time. Now, Buddy was a big, protective guy, especially around me. Lucy was chill, hardly ever barking unless she had to, and Rocky, well, he had a deep bark and growled at any guy who came near me besides my brother. One night, I found myself home alone. Mom and my brother were supposed to be back, but the rain was coming down hard, so they decided to crash in a hotel. Around 8 p.m., I noticed Lucy was growling, which freaked me out because she hardly ever did that. Then, there was a knock at the door. I answered it, and to my surprise, it was the pastor from my church. Now, here's the creepy part. This pastor had been acting weird around me, always trying to get too close. So, I tried to play it cool and asked him why he was there in the pouring rain. But before I knew it, he grabbed me. That's when Buddy, Lucy, and Rocky sprang into action. They tackled the pastor to the ground, and I wasted no time calling the cops and my mom. By the time the cops arrived, the pastor was a mess, thanks to my heroic dogs. He got arrested, and my dogs were hailed as the protectors they were. I don't have them anymore, but man, I miss those furballs. The incident with the pastor shook me up pretty bad. I mean, I knew my dogs were protective, but seeing them in action like that was something else. After that night, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease whenever I was home alone. I started locking the doors and windows even tighter, and whenever I heard a noise outside, my heart would start racing. It was like I was constantly on edge, waiting for something else to happen. But as the days passed and nothing out of the ordinary occurred, I started to relax a bit. Maybe it was just a one-time thing, I thought. Maybe I was just overreacting. That was until one night, about a week later, 
when I was home alone again. It was around midnight, and I was in the kitchen getting a snack when I heard it. A faint tapping on the window. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I slowly turned towards the window, expecting to see someone standing there. But there was nothing. Just darkness outside. I tried to convince myself that it was just a tree branch tapping against the glass or something. But deep down, I knew it wasn't. My dog started growling, and that's when I knew something was definitely wrong. I mustered up the courage to go and check outside, but when I got there, I saw nothing out of the ordinary. I went back inside, my mind racing with all sorts of terrifying possibilities. I spent the rest of the night huddled on the couch with my dogs, too scared to move. When my mom and brother finally got back the next morning, I told them what had happened, but they just brushed it off as my imagination. But I knew what I heard, and I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, was out there, watching and waiting. And that thought terrified me more than anything else.